Cameron is here. Yes. Nice. Yeah, we look. We're Ooh. doing some 5.30-ish or something. Yes. Right? They were filming a little something. Is he talking about, I guess it made the trades that he's filming a movie, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's all over. Kind of a documentary? I think so. Yeah. On, on uh, what? Comedians? Yeah, and comedy's atti attachment to misery or whatever. It's The dark side of uh, comics? Yes. Yeah. Uh, where's Kevin? Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah get him in here. He should have filmed our part Come while on we're on in. the radio. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Is, he can always get B-roll. Oh, I kind of like Kevin, that. you should have filmed man? us here. Why is that? Because this is our like our safety blanket. I, tried. I mean, our like uh, yeah. I tried actually. This, what, you, what you was tried. The, what was the holdup? I don't know. I kind of like uh, the else? idea of sitting there. Actually, when you mic. see where I'm forcing you to go, ah, really? Yeah, it's going to elicit really the creature out of its habitat. It's oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm a filmmaker now, fellas. <laughs> yes. So. Well, you're growing the, the filmmaker yeah. beard, I say. I just want to look 14 years older. <laughs> right. So I thought I would grow. Yeah, yeah, a little older. <laughs> uh, How far into it are you? Um, just that we started this week here. So uh, right before we came here, we shot Freddie Prinze Jr. talking about his dad for the first time on camera, which Whoa. was fucking amazing. Wow. Yeah, but what did he have to say? Great stories. Just yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, he was just not even one years old when, when uh, his dad uh, took himself out. And so I said, you know, how old were you before the first person, person put their fat finger in your face and said, do you know who you thought it was? Oh, you know, God. yeah, growing up with that. So, you know, he he's hilarious and he was hilarious talking about his dad and finally got to the point where he could, you know, tell these great stories that have been told to him. Mm -hmm. Like when. Uh, OK, so first of all, I don't know if you know, but because it's hard to remember this shit, but his dad was guest hosted the Tonight Show. At 19. Jesus. Oh, my God. Having only appeared once. Holy shit. One time, and Carson said, now you need to guess who. You're that good. Uh, and 19 years old. Wow. Ridiculous, right? So at 20, he's starring in the TV show. I just saw, it's just three years of white, hot, crazy. He was 23 when he shot himself? Or 22? 22. Wow. He was only 22, 22. when he shot himself? And, and why did he do it? Drugs. It was drugs? I oh, think. yeah. What was well, he on? That's, the that's, cocaine? They, they found it was all kinds of cocaine and quaaludes and, you know. Yeah. yeah. So so here's the thing. So he he and Pryor are best friends when Freddie uh, Sr. is 21 years old. And he knows Pryor's got a serious heart on for Pam Greer. So Freddie finds Pam Greer and a very young, as the story goes, Joanna Kearns, who ended up being the mother on... On, uh, yeah, if I can, uh, that show. The Seavers. The Seavers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Growing yeah. Pains. Growing Pains. God damn it. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was pushed into a corner. <laughs> Sorry. You think she was hot back then? She was 19 or 20, so probably. She must have probably. Been hot. Yeah, yeah, sure. She was all right. So, Freddie rolls up with those two, and Pryor's got such a hard on for Pam Greer that he's losing his shit, right? And decides, after a little while, maybe 20 minutes, to put on a reel-to-reel -reel tape, this being the <laughs> mid-70s, sure. of, uh, of Freddie doing stand-up from, like, a couple of weeks ago, bombing at the comedy <laughs> store. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what entertains Pryor, is to put that on <laughs> with the girls there. And Freddie says, turn that shit off, man. And Pryor's laughing. Seriously, turn that shit off. And Pryor's laughing. Finally, Freddie gets up and lays him out with two punches. Wow. He, he knocks him out. Knocked out Pryor. Knocks him out, grabs the girls, and leaves. Wow. So, so that's yeah. the story Freddie Jr. decides to share. And I'm like, this is Damn. fucking awesome. That's, that's awesome. nice. I've never heard right. that. Yeah, just that, so that kind of, you know, and his mom took him to a comedy club when he was 14 and said, I want you to see what your father did. And from that moment on, Freddie Jr. just became this absolute student and fan of stand-up he's quoting mm. bobby slayton's act i mean he he knows everybody's fucking act it was right. unbelievable is he a comic himself i don't know never was why never was he just got into the acting he wanted to do the act that's a hard act to follow too when you have Impossible. the same name you know Impossible. freddie prince Jr. that's a rough one. what has he done in acting well i met him uh, on the movie that kind of made him uh, a matinee idol if that's even a fucking thing anymore a term from the 40s <laughs> uh she's all that uh, mm -hmm. And that's when he kind of became a movie star, uh, right then in that moment. And uh, he's been in a lot of shit, right? And then did a whole bunch of other movies, you know. Yeah. And then well, the, we don't really. And want... then and then not so much, right? Yeah. Well, okay. he have, he and uh, the the wifey there had a couple of babies. They oh had, yeah, they popped out two kids. Yeah, and, uh, they do. Yeah. Well, the documentary about his father was called "He Couldn't Hear the Laughter." I think that was Freddie's. Uh, wasn't he like a real? That was a really cool name for a comedy documentary. I thought uh, the only mm. one I know was a TV movie, which was awful. Oh man, I never saw a document. The TV movie was 
Or maybe it was maybe it was the doctor. Maybe it was that. Who played talking? him in the TV movie? Oh man, Flip I'm... Wilson. Was a <laughs> <really> bad choice. <laughs> yeah, I just remember. Uh, anyways, so 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 yeah. So we did no? that. I, I, I worked with him on She's All That. That's how we became. No, no, I mean Freddie. You never met Freddie. Oh no, no, no. I was I was quite younger, but already aware of who was on the Tonight Show. But I didn't right. even remember that he guest hosted it. Nineteen. I didn't remember that That's either. fucking crazy. I do remember him having to say "Looking good" oh, all yeah, the yeah. time. <laughs> yep. That yep. was like yep. a, a big catchphrase from yeah. Chico and the Man. Right. And, oh yeah. Uh, God. So then we came here, and I did you know Lewis Black and uh, and, and Whoopi Downs, White Bell, and uh, uh, Jim Gaffigan, and. Biglia and uh, today you guys and Amy Schumer. I hear Gaffigan is a big cock. Has <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Uh, yeah, we, we, how we, does that get out there? I don't know. Someone probably saw it. He's an ex Indiana wrestler. It? Gaffigan looks like a thick cocked individual because <laughs> he's got fucking giant forearms. Gaffigan's a sneakily fucking bull strong <laughs> animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, like people look. Oh, he's got the glasses. He's probably nerdy. And then you look at his forearms. You're like this guy could fucking lift up a truck. He does look like one of those guys oh. that was born and raised on a farm. Yeah. that could just cower, carry a wrestler. cow. <laughs> yeah, 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 just a big wrestler, wrestler yeah. carrying equipment around. Big Dummy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too stupid to put a jacket on in 10 degree weather. <laughs> Has it, have, have people just been like, wow, this is really a great idea and, well, and coming right to you or you, yeah. you got to pull some teeth to get no, people? No, we, we locked up now almost 50 people to sit. Wow. I know. It's going to be like 50 to 70 hours of film. It's, I don't know. You know, I'm going to edit for a year, I think. I don't, no I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But also, it's kind of it's, it's really... Um, expanded way beyond the initial premise which was do you have mm. to be miserable to be funny and now it's everyone who chooses to be funny for a living now fascinates the fuck out of me because 98 yeah, yeah. percent of children suffer from hey look at me that's sure. that's what a child is <laughs> look at me it. look at me i want attention yeah right. take a picture are, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so who the fuck are we that choose that as a career and yeah, what the yeah. fuck is the matter with us Honestly, well, yeah, that is just an odd attention whorish thing to want to <laughs> yeah. get into. But for a, for a career, yeah, for that'll a career. be my job. I think it's lack of attention. Sure, growing up, sure, is the number one thing. Yeah, but I think to everyone go into some kind of showbiz. I think everyone suffers from that, but we're the right, ones. Right, right. So why, you know, what makes the difference between that and yeah. then making the jump to, I just want to do this as a job? It, it's the ones that really did not get the attention. Every kid thinks they're not getting the attention, but. There's then there's the people that absolutely did not yeah. for yeah. whatever reason. My but, whole life is a Lenny and Squiggy entrance. <laughs> <laughs> my my yeah. case, my mom, she was a me 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 person. So right. how, I, same we, here. We didn't get fucking attention. Right. It was all about her. It all always revolved around her. Mm. Yeah. yeah, my and mom. She would too. say she made all these sacrifices and bullshit, but she's no, the center of attention. Right, but we knew it was all about her always. <laughs> right, always. <laughs> yeah, just want your voice to be heard. That's why I do radio. I know I'm not stupid. <laughs> oh, I want to be heard. Literally hearing your own voice. Right, <laughs> through <laughs> headphones. Uh, uh, hey, yeah, what like, about you know a house of seven kids? Hey, what about me? And then the, and then the ones we did bring in from time to time. Then we always had a house full of people. Right, but the other kids must have been suffering from the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. And they didn't choose. I mean, yeah, somehow they didn't go oh. into it. You know? I mean, public speaking is America's number one fear. Mm -hmm. So, so, yeah. so who the fuck chooses to do right. that? To do that. <laughs> Wait, man, why, didn't, it, why yeah. didn't anyone in my family go into like this type of work? Because didn't they also like over yes, here? Yes, of right? course. And still to this day, a little? Wow, man. All right. Now I got to go deeper and try to figure this out. <laughs> well, that's the thing is uh, I'm I'm actually not going to to as many deep, dark places because I don't I don't think that's now as interesting as mm -hmm. uh, how how and why and, and what the fuck. Uh, yeah, yeah. As opposed to why are you sad? You know, it's not because yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite frankly, at this point in our lives, nobody is fucking sad. I mean, they've had bouts right, right, and right, struggled. Right, yeah, we've all had struggling. Richard bouts. Jenny was sad. Sure, and we're going to talk to uh, okay. the woman he was living with. Uh, oh, for, really? For many years. In fact, she went downstairs to make him pancakes when he took himself out of Jesus. This is something I, uh, I want to ask you. Uh, how many comics do you guys know? Because you're way more in the, that world than us, obviously, that are norm completely normal and don't have some weird dark side or some little, little addiction or, or what something, have you. yeah. I think it's the same thing as... Like, the, is Seinfeld a normal guy? I think it's... A, you remember when that term <clears throat> dysfunctional family came around mm -hmm. and then it didn't take too long before everyone said, everyone's fucking dysfunctional family. Yeah. I think now that can be said, too. I don't think it's rare anymore for people to be messed up. I think it, we're all... But do you know a, a few yeah. comics that well seem adjusted? to be well-adjusted, extremely normal lives where you would 
where they could easily just be a regular guy if they weren't on stage. Maybe one percent, and nobody's really coming. I to don't mind. know any. I'm sure there. I'm sure they exist. No one's coming to mind. No. Not I'm sure really. Seinfeld has something. I don't know him well enough. I'm sure he has something. Even oh, if please. it's even if it's a higher volume of narcissism than your average bear, you know. <laughs> yeah, we saw yeah. Brian Regan's dark side a little bit. Uh, a <laughs> little, little bit. bit. I don't know whose spot we want to blow up. Yeah, see, but you get a he got a few in him. He was a different Brian Regan. I saw I think Regan he's, one night. Oh my god, it was yeah, great. He was Michael Rooker from Mississippi <laughs> Burning. <laughs> it was <laughs> a guy that's not edgy on stage, doesn't curse, none of that, nothing blue. We right. closed Caroline's. <laughs> And I went to some bar across the street and uh, we Good night. tequila shots. Sure. And Regan just, he literally went from the, hey, how you doing, guy? You know, the bouncy <laughs> stage guy to both elbows, like on the bar, but his, his chin almost on the bar with his eyes going sideways, back and forth, going, Look at these motherfuckers. <laughs> Just like evil. <laughs> evil you saw the Brian. eyes change and everything? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, he wasn't inside and, anymore. And believe me, oh. I, I loved him. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, but, you know. Well, it that's was... just it. Also, you know, the whole thing about reading a crowd and all those things that you start to take on as your tools and, and all that crap. You know, just to ask somebody, what does Late Show Friday Night mean to you? And then see the varying <laughs> reactions because you guys. Would I, would, I would put you kind of in the normal category. Well. What would you share with us? Yeah. That's a little dark. I mean. <sighs> Because I know a lot of guys don't want to share their darkness. Well, That's it, the other problem. And He's by a the comic, way, and you do impression. Believe, yeah. no, no one <laughs> comes from a place of being anyone but him. It's a happy place. Yeah, I keep trying to be somebody else, Opie. Yeah, what the yeah, fuck yeah. else do you want to know? Yeah. 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 Kevin's not available right now. Yeah. He's five years old. But guess who yeah. is? Yeah. How does schizophrenia sound? <laughs> How's that was, working for you, quick quack? Your mother was a narcissist? Your mom was a narcissist? Oh, uh, fuck yeah. Uh, I know she's still the center of attention she's nuts uh, party of one absolutely oh, okay. shit. Center oh, of God. how many oh, how many kids in your just family? one older brother and he won't fucking talk to her no huh? he won't talk yeah, to he's her. pretty much at it what does he wow. do? i mean it's not yeah. official there's been no announcements wow. yeah. <laughs> there's no banner we got a few of those uh, yeah 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 God. just uh it's all you now you keep Good. it Good just luck. nice enough <laughs> what does he do for a living he uh, uh, runs a flooring company that's owned by a big mothership like DuPont or one of those places. <laughs> and when like the new ballpark opens up, he, they do the flooring. Whoa. Like, uh, you know, we're from San Francisco. So the wow. Pac Bell, the AT&T Giants thing, he did the whole flooring for that whole stadium. That's a lot as of the floor. foreman. That's a shit ton of floor. Yeah. It really is. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Imagine if it was one giant piece you had to lay down. <laughs> <laughs> Roll it, <in>, fellas. <laughs> you got to cut it right the first time. Yeah, you yeah. fuck it up. <laughs> 400 yeah. tons of flooring. <laughs> yeah, but there again, he clearly needed to be in charge of something. Uh -huh. I mean, that's his job is being in charge. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah he saw wow. it out. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. He's not laying any fucking what? floor. I can promise you that. What, what was your mom's <laughs> thing? Uh, I don't fucking know. Just dancing and singing when no one gave a shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, great. She's like the snake pit. Yeah. Sweet Georgia Brown. You ever yeah. see that lady with the fucking maniac <laughs> yes. is dancing? Was she ever diagnosed? <laughs> no. No, no. Now it leads it me never to... never got clinical. But, you know, she went through uh, phases of, you know, um, I'm okay, you're okay, you know, that mm. bullshit in the 70s, 80s. Right, the, right. The, right. You well, know, self... Uh, Self-help crap. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'm actually going somewhere with this. It leads me to something else here, that we're all huge fans of Johnny Carson. Yeah. And you saw the documentary, right? Loved it. With his mom? Yeah. Oh, boy. Holy fuck. That was an eye-opener. It yeah. was, right? Yeah. But then in the end, she was saving all this shit in the closet. So uh, she was extremely proud, but she would not never. say it publicly. Yeah. Which and what was it? Was it Time Magazine? We just talked about yep. this. Yeah, was Time. Time Magazine was over interviewing her for a big article and... And yeah. what was ex what what did she exactly she, say? He was watching the monologue with the reporter and uh, the mother at the end of the uh, monologue said, "Well, that wasn't very funny," and then walked out of the Just room. Just fantastic! Wow, the time Thanks. guys there, and, and this is and this was the time when if you were in a magazine, holy fuck, yeah. you know the whole I, the whole country was going to read about it. I did find I've found so far, and I think I'm going to continue to a, a trend, which is somebody like that fueled us like crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, honest to God. Right. Yeah. Uh, I uh, first got to L.A. 30 years ago this month and wow. uh, mm -hmm. to pursue this acting nonsense. And the first manager I met with said, well, read this scene. Go in the other room and study it and come back and read this scene. And I came back in. I read the scene. She said, OK, well, you know what? 
Uh, acting's not for everyone. Oh, maybe stand up is really where you should uh, continue wow. to focus. And you, and I walked out of there saying, "I'll fucking show you." I mean, somebody. Have you seen uh, her since? Oh, I'd set her on fire if I did. Oh, you never saw <laughs> her? No, no. That's great. Though. You don't she know what happened to her? Right? Nope. That's on a need to care basis at this point. She yeah, probably doesn't. Yeah, she probably doesn't remember if it was just that one audition because it's. Oh, funny. she couldn't possibly remember me. It literally was thirty years ago, and I, and I was probably Literally. horrible. I mean, she wasn't wrong, uh, but she you know was I mean? shitty about it. But she was shitty about it. Yeah. yeah. She didn't say go take some classes. She said she just completely wrote no me nonsense. off. Like you know hey. what? Acting's not for everyone. You stink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We we got similar lives. It's creepy. Oh. I was in college and I was failing out. I was literally failing out, and I knew if I failed out, I was fucked. And I wanted to do radio. Went right. to a school that, that you know you got on the radio right away, eighteen. So I had to go to each teacher and ask for. I just need a half a grade more to to stay in school. And the communications teacher told me the same fucking thing. Well, I guess college and maybe communications isn't for you, and would not give me the grade. As I'm pleading, I'm like, look, I'll do anything. Right. I'll prove you wrong. Just give me. I just need like instead of what it what was it a C? I need a C plus, whatever. Right. The fucker wouldn't give it to me. I found another teacher that had nothing to do with communications that heard my plea and gave me a chance. Right. And then I never looked back. I'm like, fuck. Right. I was just given a gift, and I got to make sure I don't fail out of school now. But that's the thing. It fueled you, and I wonder with Carson if the mom actually right. did him a solid and, by being such a bitch. Mm -hmm. And my thing is I came yeah. from, from such a strict family that when I went to college, I was out of my fucking mind. <laughs> yeah, of course. So it wasn't like I, 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 I wasn't dumb. But the party and everything else, like what? I could I could stay out to two, three in the morning, and and I don't have to worry about what my mom's gonna say when I get home. Yeah, because we had a curfew in uh, in uh, high school. It was like eleven, I think. Really? And eleven oh five, all hell would break loose. Like it, it was only five minutes, and she would lose her fucking mind. So you either decided to behave or be the uh, the bad kid at, at, in the house. And I decided, fuck, just be the good kid. It's sure. a lot easier. Sure. So then when I went to college, I was just like life vacation. I, I couldn't handle it because I was like, holy shit, this is a, it, a whole new world. It's kind of like what Ant says about the Wizard of Oz going from black and white to color. Yeah. That was me going to college. Like, what the fuck? I lived in a black and white world. Oh, yeah, Look you, at all this color shit. You had so much fun, you eventually saw flying monkeys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, it, you know, then I almost fucked up my whole world by failing out of college. And the one teacher that I thought would see it my way because was, that was my major said, nope. Holy shit. He said, nope, sorry. Fuck Maybe this you. just isn't for you. Yeah. Holy fuck. You never forget that. Never forgot it. No. And I forgot the teacher's name who gave me the grade because I would love to praise him and I would love to know what ever happened to that guy. I wrote a whole thing. Had a hand charges. <laughs> yeah. So again, it's <laughs> terrible. It's I pleaded, inevitable. I pleaded my case on paper and handed it in to these guys. Holy shit. Each fucking teacher. I was in trouble. Well, you were showing some effort there. That's what I thought. <laughs> I'm like, look, I know what it says, and I fucked up. I, I, I admitted. Yeah. You know, and I explained why. I explained some of the shit I just told you. Right. Nope. Sorry. Fuck you. <laughs> That's beautiful. Right. Wow. Uh, I have so, some good points to make on your documentary. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say, Kevin Laugh is a lot like a dry <laughs> tear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is there any way to get Denny Falcone yeah, in on this thing? Denny Falcone. Sure. Are you, are you, we, you're a fan, right? We listen all the time. Oh, yeah, my better just... half here is the one to turn me on to the fucking show. And, nice. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> yeah. No, she, uh, yeah. It's going to be pop culture with you till the end of time. Oh, with this man. One over here. Uh, yeah. Uh, so let's get Denny in. The fucking hard drive of hits. Are you kidding me? This oh, guy is hits. magical. What do you like about him? He's magical. He is. <laughs> the same thing that you guys go nuts with, with the everything. It's got its place and its purpose. And yeah, you could, you could simply get double cross the promotion over here. Oh, it's a Saturday night. So what right? do we say for Saturday night? Uh, Isn't it's it uh, Elton John's latest hit coming up. Uh, look. I can't wait till he comes in and you realize what a judgment error you made. <laughs> well, Jimmy's not a fan. No, he's it's not a, even a bit. A he's Jimmy's not man. a fan. Time capsule. Here he oh, is. There he is. There he is. Hard drive ahead. Ah. Permission to come on board, sir? Oh, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> She's loving it. She's losing her mind. Uh, it's a hot mic, though. Be careful. Hot yeah, mic. Hot, hot mic. mic. <laughs> yeah. What Dennis said, Falcone. Gotta work stand up today, you know? Kevin Pollack uh, probably just made your days. He's That's a fan. Great. That's yeah. A, well, a fan well, from like. this show. He actually, right. of course. He actually wrote me and said that he was a fan. Yeah. So this isn't even for the radio. That's, That's true. Great. Yeah. Could, I, could I ask Sal if I get a picture with him? <laughs> All right. You got to oh, ask okay? Sal. No, because Sal, gets, Sal gets very upset when Dennis decides to take pictures with uh, the celebrities that, that the come in. proper channels here. Yes, go through the proper channels. Well, I think uh, Mr. Falcone is all about proper channels. If of I've course. learned anything by listening to you on this show, <laughs> well, it's that there's right. a 
right. a proper channel and a rule for everything. You have to have rules, yeah. yeah. And, How uh, would you cross-promote the word rules right now and on the other music channels available <laughs> on Sirius? Well, we, we do have many rules on many of the other channels, exactly what we play. Like we have uh, the Metal Channel, which is promoting the Metallica show, the concert, right. the, uh, that you could only win by going to SiriusXM.com. So I've just promoted that. So you got to make sure that you're, you know, you're cross promoting. I was working on the 60s channel uh -huh. and I was playing some Steppenwolf, Brilliant. which would be a forerunner to the musical genre of metallic uh, metal oh, well, music. Okay. Right. Sure. Sure. I'm still lacking the word rules. Rules. Yeah. 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 Let me mm. see. That was rules. the bridge. The bridge rules. Uh, let me see. One of my rules is yeah. always to go into the studio. Fully prepared. Fully, right, yes, fully yeah. prepared. And yet, uh, and contrary leave. to... Oh, good. <laughs> right now, <laughs> contrary to that rule. And, and well, I just kind of stumbled in. Can I... Can I? There's a rule <laughs> that I guaranteed you learned years ago that yes. me and Ann broke, and that's why we're so fucking successful. <laughs> yes. And that is uh, the rule of leaving your problems on the other side of the door. You tell them. Hey, there you exactly. go. Every PD will would, would tell you, any problems you got... You leave them behind. Nobody wants to hear them. No one wants to hear them. As soon as you fucking enter that studio, you leave all that outside the studio, and right? you're right. You've sure, made exactly. a career out of just problems. Yes! Yeah. Just yeah. the yes. problems. Not only just fucking the bringing them in, but creating them in here. <laughs> right. That's true. <laughs> Leaving any goodwill we might have yeah. outside. So yes. how would you cross-promote the problems show? My yes. mantra is good times and great oldies, but here's one by the Everly Brothers. It's problems. <laughs> one of those great ah. 50s hits that you'd hear on the 50s on Fox. Oh, that's oh, yeah. that's great. He just and crossed. Problems, Promoted. problems. Mm. Little Great information. He's, oh, the, he's the Larry Klein of uh, <laughs> Sirius XM. Kevin, now Wonderful. you're a fan of the Denny uh, Falcone. Hard Dennis driver Fal hits. Well, but yeah, not hits. so much of a fan that you're going to be filming him today, right? Uh, you know, do, would you have a lot to say about comedy? I wasn't on the spot at all there. You're a big fan of comedy, right? Of course. Right? Of course. So what do you know about a documentary comedy? called Misery Loves Comedy, that would be something you'd want to talk about. Sure, why not? That not Well, why not is not a correct answer. No, so, no. Uh, there's got to be a better reason. A passion. You're kind well, of auditioning right now for Kevin for Pollack. I'll do some research before I go in. Research? you got years of experience. What would do you, you know about comics yeah. and comedy? Who's your favorite comedian? Uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. Anyone from the this century? Uh, this century, uh, let me see. There's there's a lot of good talent out there. Jim Morton happens to be one of my. Well, that would be a correct answer. Oh, that's a good, what answer. A, that's a, that's a good and, one. And how uh, would you cross promote Jim right now? Uh, Jim Norton is also one of our music hosts, as well as being heard every every weekday morning on the uh, Opie and Anthony show. Uh huh. All the way with O and A. Quick. All the way. Uh, oh, wow. Is that made up just now? That no, one. that's all the, the way with gotta, That's an old mantra. You gotta use that. Yeah. All well, the way with ONA. Let me ask you this. Do you have a backup copy of the hard drive of hits? Oh, sure. I have oh, three. Three backups. Three. Three. Are oh, they yeah. in three different locations? Yes, one is in Pete Townsend's house. <laughs> one is Gary Glitters. <laughs> I, I always get, <laughs> yes, when, when I go out to perform, I always carry the profits. Three fucking celebrity pedophiles yanked out of thin air, all attached to music. We did learn yesterday that he's a pedophile. Now, yeah. I'm not a pedophile. Well, wow. according to Sal. Yeah, Sorry, I should have added that part. You just can't throw that word around. I, I, no, you really can't. No, you're right. No. But, well, but you Sal can. you are. You, 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 can. Well, you, you can. can. You can, yeah. technically, <laughs> until lawsuits arrive. <laughs> right. And then you're right, stuck. Right, right, right. Yeah. Then, yes, a cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, so, so I, uh, I uh, had... Um, uh, Richard Blade come to the house and spin some wax for a sure. uh, 30th party because mm -hmm. nice. it was an 80s theme. Okay, yeah. And uh, I understand you too travel with a hard drive of hits and people can uh, uh, per sure. pay you to come to the party and, and spin the wax. I, have uh, you had him at I the did. compound? I yes. had him at the compound. What a great what a time, time we had. Uh, How many time. hours uh, was he there? Until the cops came. Until the cops came. So yeah, well, that's was, every uh, party. It was yeah. a compound. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how the parties yeah. end. Right. Yeah. True. The cops uh, came and they said, "Turn it up, you nerd." <laughs> <laughs> but the best how, thing many, how many breaks and say in a five-hour shift will you take? Oh, and, uh, it's continuous. There's oh, no I don't break. take a break. Oh, no, there's no, no he just There's a no, catheter. No, no. What's oh, happening? Yeah. No, we, <laughs> we keep the music going. If, if you want me to knock it down because you guys are having some dinner, you know, I'll play some background music, maybe some right, Sinatra, some right, Dean Martin, right. some Michael Bublé. Because so, that's the kind uh, of parties at the compound. They all right. decide to have dinner at the same uh, yeah. time. A little dinner fucking, yeah, yeah. It was, a little loud, it was a little loud when Jim came in. Remember? He, yes, he it was like, too loud. The music yeah. was actually too loud. He was very panicked. I heard that. Yeah, it was too loud. Why do I picture these parties like any pool at the major hotels in Vegas? Just People yes. dancing, and jumping up in the air. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that how I am? Yes, without the yeah. diversity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
please. <laughs> oh my but, god. But the basement was more like Playboy after dark. Yeah, you know, yes. 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 was going on down there. Bill Cosby walking in and just talking to him saying, "Where's the jello pudding?" Because you got the thing on your face. Are you ever relieved when the cops show up? Uh, like relieved, like thank God I can finally shut this party down. Uh, yeah, yeah, there are times. Uh, I, I was talking to the cops out on the lawn, and that's when uh, Danny made an appearance with the hula hoops. <laughs> and, and he comes out from the side of the house as I'm talking to the police, and he goes, "I forgot to bring out the hula hoops." And I just, I just looked at him. I looked at the cops. I threw my arms up like, ah, it "Was I like the know. same delivery." Pesci was kind of upset that there was blood on the floor. Yeah. Sorry about your floor, Henry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got the blow up instruments? Oh, oh yeah. What do you got? The saxophone? I got the guitars. The blow up guitars. Just take those old records off the shelf. Um, Let me hear you play those air guitars. Come on, get them up. I Make just some heard noise. that Dean Martin would call the police on his own parties. Really? I to, did just hear that. To really? stop. To stop. He'd had enough, so he get would secretly out. go How upstairs. How fucking funny is that? That's, That's great. great. Dean Martin, the famous Lush, who they say half the time was iced tea in his glass, but right. he would go upstairs and call the police, and they'd show up and he'd say, I'm sorry, everybody, we gotta Because <laughs> he just didn't know how to he just didn't know how to get people out of his house. Exactly. Wait, what's the iced tea room? Iced tea rumor? Oh, no, in, it's in his a, glass. Oh, in his glass. I thought you meant Is ice cat. Kind of ice cat. Yeah. Um, uh, no, that it wasn't booze. Half the time it wasn't booze. That he wasn't really. He was a raging alcoholic. Well, that's, this is the rumors. Maybe not so much. Maybe it was an act. Some, ah. Yeah. yeah. I mean, huh. that's been around for a while. That's not you a new yeah, yeah, yeah. story. That's not a new. Uh, that's not hot. I, I haven't heard that one. Do you, see, do you ever see Sinatra live? You know, back no. in the, I did. I saw him a couple times. I saw him at the Westchester Premier Theater. Years ago, back in the late 70s, Sinatra's doing like a whole nice, you know, slow songs, ballads and everything. Dean Martin walks out with a rolling bar, oh. with a rolling bar to the front, and it starts pouring drinks for people. What do that's you have, crazy. Pal? What do you have? Oh, it's, that's beautiful. Yeah. For the, for the audience. Yeah. No, they the like the audience. There's nowhere. In case the because listeners just... didn't know, uh, the hard drive of hits are, what, what are you, in your early 70s now? Oh, no. You mean by uh, age or the music? You. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Double nickels, 55. Double nickels. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy's disgusted. You don't like the double nickels? Double Jimmy? nickels. No, not even if you literally have 10 cents do I like that. Uh, no. <laughs> double nickels, 55. Uh -huh. It's just a way yeah, to say yeah, it. Yeah, 55. Sure. 55. 55. 55. 55. Yeah. Would you, would but you the music put... goes back you know, to the 1940s all the way up to today. Uh, technically, Everything. music goes back a little further. Even well, further. Well, uh, yeah, but I mean, I don't bring acetates or anything. But I mean, I oh, do have acetates. everything from ban yeah. big band. Okay. Because uh -huh. you have to look at the age of people. Like the, just this past weekend, I did a uh, 40th wedding anniversary, so oh. people were in their early 60s. Right. The latest record I played was 1983. It's raining men. Of People course, you're going to play a training man. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, how else are you going to get everyone on the floor? <laughs> they were just going crazy. They were just were going they? wild. Yeah. Although I did play their blurred lines. Did you? Oh well, yeah. the one of the topical new yeah, hits. That's a yeah, great, that's a great one to play at a transgendered party. <laughs> <laughs> As we all fight the obvious while we dance. Did you just say the people in their early sixties uh, were going nuts? To yeah, the music? Really? they yeah. were going crazy. Yeah, yeah. Funny. Funny. turns out it was two yeah. heart attacks and a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're gonna play some of that Saturday Night Fever music, are you? I said, sure. Come on. Oh, yeah. They liked that. Oh, they liked yeah. the Saturday oh, Night Fever. But I get out there and I do a little strut. You know that Travolta was doing uh, walking uh -huh. down 86th Street in Brooklyn. Sure. Uh -huh. you, you you know staying what? alive. You know what? You could probably could have played uh, later than '81. Yeah. Um, a few of the songs from Dirty Dancing, maybe. Now oh, we're talking. I did. We did. We did that. You did that. Oh yeah, we were out there doing the contours. Way ahead of you. Right. Come on. Yeah, I know. Right. Who, who, the who am I talking to? Yeah, I should know. Man. Right in the middle of shout, I usually bang right into the contours. You do? Yeah, it drives them into a frenzy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A frenzy. Yeah, it's yeah. just a violent word for you. <laughs> bang them yeah. into the contours. What is, what is the other one? That you, what's the contours? Uh, do you love me? Oh, okay. 1962 hit music. <laughs> oh, yeah, I contours. just can't get enough, no, yes. honestly and truly. But what about the big hit song from that? I had the time of Use it, my use it uh, as a wrap-up song. Oh, you did? Yeah, I hope everybody had themselves a good time today. I want to get a nice round of applause for our guests of honor, Shirley and Jack, celebrating 40 years together. And we wish them another 40 years. How about it? Let's hear it for one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the reason that's we came out to celebrate. I'm sorry, but Shirley and Jack, you just picked the perfect couple's yeah. name. They really yeah. did. Let's they hear were. it for Shirley and Jack. I bet you Jack yeah. doesn't want another 40 years. Yeah, exactly. Nah, Jack's had it. Yeah, like they'll both be 100. Um. We both know they're going to be dead shortly. <laughs> Shirley's got a fucking How much half more? a bra left. <laughs> Oh, Fuck him. I don't know who they are. He made him up. Fuck Shirley. Fuck Shirley right in her mouth. 
I'd like to watch a horse kick her fucking fake teeth down her throat. <laughs> <Jesus. Cunt. laughs> I really don't Holy. work. I loathe Shirley. Shirley's a cunt. I love oh, poor damn. Shirley, yeah. right? Honest to God. How much more, how much more, Denny, if you just talk the whole party and there's no mu actual music Would that happening? be great? Yes. How much more if you just do segues? Yes. No, no that would be great. Just, just not talking with the party? No, I want, no, I want only just oh, no, that's the, the personality. Talking. That personality is part of the price. No, Anybody saying, can just stand there and just play the music. I'm not saying part of the price. I'm saying all the price. How much to just talk? I don't talk. want music. I just want you to talk for five mm. hours. No, that that's would right. be a, b a boring party. We're just oh, going to stand wow. there and talk. No, how much yeah. to read Mein Kampf over a laugh track? <laughs> 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 That's a legitimate question, Denny. Yeah, it really is. Once somebody hired me, they just wanted me to play big band music for four hours. Oh. That's it, huh? And that was Shirley tough. and Jack. Yeah, that was tough. Shirley because and Jack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shirley and Jack. Those two. How did you, oh. you pull that one off? And this was back in the days of vinyl, too, so I needed uh, I needed a lot of records you before You needed some CDs. 78s. Yes. Well, you know, I had them on 33s, but it was, it was tough. Yeah. Did you pull it off? Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, you had to. Mm. You have to give the customer what they want. Well, of course. I don't think I've ever heard them referred to as 33s. We know they're 33s, but I, it's always other LPs or albums. That may be the first time I've actually heard 78s. You always hear by the number, but 33s. I'm going to spend some 33s. 33s. No, no, it's just I, I worked at a radio station. It was back in a farming community, and every morning from 5.30 to 6, we had to play polka music because there was a lot of Polish people in the community. Oh. So one morning, I didn't know that the... I had the turntable <laughs> in the wrong gear. Uh -oh. I had the polka record, which was an LP 33, in 45. Uh oh! Didn't what? sound any different to me. Wow! This you is did. one of those stories. It's a crazy the story. At the jingle party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell. Yeah. Hold on, sit down first. Yeah. Wait till you hear this. You didn't have it on forty-five. <laughs> oh, oh, no. shit. Yeah, if you were to write the sitcom <laughs> version starring yeah, yeah. the hard drive of hits, that'd be the opening scene. <laughs> right, right. So, are you ready for this? Right. Polka music yeah. at 45 RPM. Yeah. Yeah. That's Say crazy. Is, absolutely. So. And then Dolph Sweet grabs his chest and falls down the steps. <laughs> feeling, feeling Polish <laughs> it's like Polish Manic. It's like that City. EDM music today. It was so high energy. It was, I, just, uh, it was just frenetic. I remember as a kid, it was always funny to put the 33 and the third on 45. And, you know, you listen to the Beatles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I, didn't, I didn't take my records to people's parties because what? I wouldn't. I would want to be the person to put the record on the uh, Victrola on the closing the play. Yeah, because I, you know, people would scratch it. I would hate when people would have those record cases. What? Remember the plastic one with the spindle? Oh yeah. And they would take the sleeves off and just put the records on top of each other. Oh my God! That's not kidding. good. That's not good. That just scratches uh, them. Uh, but how are I didn't realize the added bonus of having uh, Denny here was the the abject uh, <laughs> frustration of Jim. <laughs> Oh, Jimmy's not a fan. This is the best part of the. I didn't, <laughs> he's not a he's fan. He's disgusting. How was I never catching on to that? At oh, he's, at Jimmy's, home. Jimmy hates what we it's call Denny. It's not that I don't like Denny. I do like Denny. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's why you went right to words with friends. Yeah, well, I have yeah. a fucking, <laughs> I have a fucking Q, two eyes, not good. Ouch. Ping pong, an H and I and a V. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Denny, what was the first uh, record you bought? First record I bought. We were just uh, talking about this the other day. Uh, Might yeah. have been the uh, Chipmunks Christmas What's album. That? Of course, oh, it of was. course, it Chipmunks had to be a novelty Christmas. song. <laughs> yeah, you're a fan of the novelty song. Oh, I love the novelty. No, the song. first Dickie record you Goodman. bought though. Dickie Goodman, yeah, uh, you like yeah, those? Yeah, uh, it was hey, the, uh, Mr. It was the Chipmunks Christmas that? album and, and uh, oh God. the uh, Beatles' Dude. first album too. Meet the Beatles. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, right from the Christmas Chipmunks to the, the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. kind of a jump. very fast transition. That's a, very, yeah. it's a big jump. I just play them over and over. What did you used to put on if you know you were kind of getting? Down. Down. Before Barry ladies. White, yeah. what was your go-to? What, yeah, was what your would you put on to cover the screams? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sound of the hammer claw hitting her. Temptations, 1965, <laughs> My sure. Girl. My Girl? Oh, My yeah. Girl. Tall, yeah. tan, and talented, baby, the Temptations. Oh, nice. Oh, How about the Four Tops? Four Tops, sure. Four Tops spinning, yeah. They yes. are too, uh, uh, four yeah. Tops That's what you high on a Friday. tempo stuff. Four Tops. tempo music. Did I tell you guys when I... Dominant gay men. No, the Four Tops were spinning. Floppy bottom. Did I ever tell you guys that story when I did... Casino and Rickles. Uh, I was stuck there for 20 weeks shooting that fucking movie, even though I'm only, wow. only in it nine week, uh, nine <laughs> minutes. The way this course says he shoots is that you're just stuck there because he might change his mind any given day, so they make you stay. Uh -huh. So I said to my stand-up agent, book me on the fucking strip opening up for somebody. You know, well, I'm stuck here, so get me a gig. So he gets me a gig opening up for the Four Tops, and I come into work on the movie, and Rickles says, Oh, I see you in the marquee there. You open up for the Four Tops. That's great. I'm with Frank all summer. Let me know if you want tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just 
just trying to make a buck while I'm right, right, yeah. stuck there. Oh, he God. fucking hammered me right in the face. I'm a Frank off someone. Let me know if you want tickets. <laughs> I was just watching that the other day, and um, that fucking look you give when you're signing those papers, and you got to look up like, oh, I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's such a, it's great, a great look. look. Oh. I can't not watch. You know, it's a great know. moment in that movie that when, when Pesci murders the, the woman who's suing. Put your head down gently. That, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was obvious. Was that a Pesci uh, thing, or maybe you don't oh, know? Oh, no, that was a Pesci thing. That was he just something yeah, he just decided yeah, yeah. to that lovingly That was really sick. Her. That was such an odd assassination <laughs> shot. It was yeah, great. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because there's really no reason. He no, can just no, walk out. No, no. He could pop her and walk. Yeah. Fuck, fuck Pesci. <laughs> Not taking a picture after an all night flight. Fuck yeah. Pesci. Oh, right. <laughs> well, right, 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 right. And I could have like got, I could have taken video of him snoring with his mouth wide open. I didn't do it. <laughs> right. End up on TMZ. Fuck. Hey, what's Joe Pesci doing? Yeah, right. <laughs> guy hanging over the back. I bet he's tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, As they're drinking their fucking lattes, <laughs> their sugary coffee drink. Yeah. I smack myself every time I click on one of those TMZ links on Twitter. Yeah. I'm like, what am I doing? Why duk, am I duk. even doing it? And it's like, sh and then the dumb voiceover. Hey, did somebody say? Oh, fuck yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Go it. fuck yeah. yourself. Yeah. Oh, I just can't stand it. I yeah, can't stand yeah. him. I can't stand yes, that Harvey yes. Levin piece of Harvey shit. Harvey Levin. The one yeah. that doesn't commit to anything. Course. Just a vulture. Yeah, that's beautiful. Just a, he's from people's court. That's yeah, yeah, that's and then he makes you. a fortune on the dregs of other people. Just a vulture. Yeah. Absolute. People Fucking worst that. ambulance chaser ever. Even the paparazzi used to be like somebody. Like, they had to have the equipment and everything. Now it's just some fucking skell with a cell phone yeah. asking embarrassing questions of people. You get off any flight at uh, JFK or L.A., the cross-country flights, mm -hmm. there's somebody, these knuckleheads at every fucking right. baggage claim. Every yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think of Kim Kardashian's lady? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah. Abdul Jabbar was on my flight coming from L.A. and uh, what Kareem? Yes. No, Mike Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> <laughs> Kareem, I probably should have specified that. Mike Abdul Jabbar oh, okay. is a guy that works Mike. for Allstate, uh, and uh, he hooks me up on uh, on my oh, insurance oh, rates. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he that was on your flight. That happens. It was wow. so bizarre. Yeah, yeah, he walked in, he winked at me because we know the insurance rate has been getting me. <laughs> 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 Does he have trouble like sitting and and yeah? It was really weird. I thought it was him, and I see him getting on the. He didn't even recognize me because I, I said, uh, "Hey, good to see you again, Kareem." And he really didn't look up. He's just he's like, "Oh, hey, man!" And he just sat down. Mm -hmm. um, and his his publicist was with him, and uh, I, I looked at one point. It was very funny because he had dozed off where he was sitting there with like it's so hard for him to get comfortable. No shit. Like, he has to just sit up and lean against the window and he had his uh, his fucking blanket Oy. over his head. He looked like ET. Like he's sure, just towering sure. above yeah, everybody yeah. and I watched him walk to the bathroom. Oh, I that thought when I was in the I'm like something. how the f he must have to sit when he there's no way I don't know how he, would he could pull stand that up off. in that fucking bathroom and right. comfortably piss. I've had some great flights where you just kind of Dunk your head against yeah. that little slanty wall by the bathroom, and you're just pissing, uh, bouncing around a little. Uh, yeah. So he, I bet you, he sits to piss. He must have. To. He's just too big a dude. Yeah. That's how I picture him. Yeah, or kneeling, pissing, <laughs> just sitting and yeah, pissing in the plane. When I, when I think about it. Yeah, <laughs> Every I time I think about him. Oh, yeah. he's a big man. <laughs> What's the matter, Sam? Oh. <laughs> well, why are you saying that? Because you're he's like, wearing salmon pants standing against a trash <laughs> can? <laughs> like like impending doom. Yeah. He's probably wondering why he's not in his chair. <laughs> are we done with Danny? Danny, I oh, just... Danny, gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you, Danny. Danny. God, it's an honor. We're going to need to take oh, a photo. Oh, oh, we'll ask Sal. Without a doubt. But, uh, sure. yeah. Well, wait, uh, we got a uh, The girl here needs fall. a photo. We're about to move into fall. What should we be doing as a radio show? What should we be doing moving what, into fall? What is that? Well, of course, you've got the fall festivals. The fall festival. You got the uh, weekend. Uh, you've got the. Uh, not but really do you a lot start some songs? Some, not really a lot no of fall themes. Songs. No, no fall Autumn themes. leaves. Uh, Autumn leaves a little too well. Roger Williams at the keyboard. Uh -huh. Very nice instrumental, though. <laughs> That's a course. beautiful instrumental. How soon before we start pushing to Halloween? Uh, Halloween basically uh, October. Has begun. We're yeah. seven weeks Octo out. Yeah, October because we're, we're uh, you less know, you, than seven you do weeks October, out. October, Jocktober. You also do a safe Halloween. When does Jocktober? Do what do you mean a safe Halloween? A safe Halloween first. with the kids. What do you mean a safe, safe Halloween? Halloween? We used to do that all the time. Good times and great oldies. We'll be down at the mall for you this weekend as we bring the kids down. You bring the kids down oh, to walk oh. through the mall. No, that ain't happening. Yeah, no, you know. Seven percent less razor blades this and year. I to, kids. <laughs> and I used to wear the yes. costume. I was the mascot for the radio station. I used to wear the duck. He used no, to wear no. the duck costume. What does that mean? It was a, 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 um, a mascot suit. Sure. Because every radio station should a have duck. a mascot. Wow. And we had a duck because I worked on Long Island. You go anywhere in the world, you pick up a menu, and you see, gee, Long Island duck. So I wore the duck costume. 
That's a moment of pride yeah. for you. Yeah. 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 And, and I would walk around the mall taking pictures with kids. Were you allowed kids to speak? Love that stuff. No. No, no. No, no not, speaking. Not inside yeah. that costume. No speaking. So no speaking. Was, was Danny, do the library because we're wrapping up for today. Uh, My advice show, by the way, is today at 10. Okay. I didn't do it yesterday because I had an appointment. So today nice. I'm going People look forward to the I, I love that to, show. Uh, I have to go to John Sahag oh. and get my her did. <laughs> for the big uh, movie shoot. Uh -huh. Oh, well, yeah. Be, I hope they fuck it up and it afros and it's red. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. <laughs> we we have a wonderful makeup artist. Oh, good. So oh, she'll good. powder you up and uh, get, lose, oh, lose all the pasty from the three. Perfect. Nice. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah, great. Give you a little tan. If you yeah, she's I a need. member of a Mexican cartel. She's like, I'm just going to put your head back. <laughs> Shave your fucking lar larynx. I keep saying that word wrong. <laughs> Kevin, always a pleasure. What else yes. are we promoting, buddy? Uh, for me? Nothing? Oh, just, no, no. Just a movie uh, thing? We're working on the movie. Cool. I, I mean, I'm in a couple movies that are coming out before year's end, but fuck that and fuck them. So. Nice. That's a guy with a real career, a guy who throws away a couple of movies <laughs> couple he's of in. Movies. I did a table read last night for a friend, and it's all I wanted to talk about for four hours. <laughs> and I didn't fuck up! <laughs> you want to promote your table read. I really do. Oh, my God. That's, that's great. fantastic. Yeah, that's... I got to get out of here. Yeah. I got a cab. Uh, yeah. Danny, really what do you quick. got over well, there? You probably right. heard about Everybody the whole home HD DVR from Dish called the Hot. If you have it, you're living under a rock. One of its most amazing features is Auto Hop, which gives you the power to skip all the commercials from most major network primetime shows. All you have to do is enable it once. The first time you play back a show, then put down the remote and let the hopper skip all the commercials. When you try to fast forward through commercials with the normal DVR, it really never works. With a hopper from Dish, you can finally watch your favorite shows totally interrupted. All the way through, from beginning to end, completely commercial free. If you love watching primetime network shows but hate sitting through commercials, the Auto Hop feature is perfect for you. And you can only get it with the hopper from Dish. Watch more TV, watch fewer commercials, all with the hopper from Dish. Call 1 800 Watch TV to get Dish Network today. Plans start at just $29.99. That's 1 800 Watch TV. Denny. Yes, sir. Are you bummed out that you were doing a live read with all that background noise? I'm very no, unprofessional. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> very unprofessional, though, right? It's all part of being a professional broadcaster. They don't, they they don't care the mics are on. That's okay. It's Kevin Pollock and, and, and Anthony, you know, so it's okay with me. It's just an honor to be in here with you guys. Professional broadcasters, Mike. And Sam. You're well, very disrespectful. Well, Mike says it on the my business card. Kevin Pollock is very disrespectful. Yes, I'll catch you later. I, I personally don't care. Broadcast professional. Hold on. Anthony doesn't care. But we got a, a, a professional broadcaster. He's doing a live read, and you guys are just babbling in the background. That's very unprofessional. He had he had music playing. It sounded like ambiance. It's like if we were doing a live <laughs> broadcast. Oh, wow. You're not going to trash Kevin Pollock? Of course not. The man's, the man's uh, a legend. He was so nice to me here. I, I, I'm not going to trash him. What are you kidding? But he was talking into a hot mic That's all right. in the distance. That's all right. That's all right. All right. What else we got? Do we do this one now, too? Oh, yeah. Here, Danny. Me, too, huh? Yeah, you want to do the other one? A little double dip. <laughs> it would be a pleasure if you did our live reads this break. Stay tuned for Jim Norton's advice show. Thank you, Kevin Pollack. Here's Denny. On September 14th, the world will be watching when undefeated pound-for-pound -pound king Floyd, Mo uh, Floyd Mayweather puts it all on the line against unbeaten Mexican powerhouse Canelo Alvarez. Don't miss the biggest event in boxing as the two best fighters of their generation face off in a winner-take-all showdown. Plus, it's a battle of the knockout artists as Fast and Furious Danny Garcia takes on hard-hitting Lucas Matisse. Did I say that right, Sam? Yes, you did. And all right, for the, un for the unified super lightweight championship, this is the one event you can't miss. Floyd Way Mayweather versus Canelo Alvarez. Only one is the fastest and the toughest. Only one will remain undefeated. Who will that be? Mayweather or Canelo? Find out Saturday, September 14th, live on pay-per-view. Don't don't miss it. Contact your pay-per-view provider to order. Opie and Anthony have left the building. Left the building. But Jim Norton is not going anywhere. If you have problems and a phone, it's your lucky day. The Jim Norton Show.